Hi, I'm Rachel from Yoga for Pain Care Australia and this is one of a series of videos with information about Yoga for Pain practitioner training in 2020. And it's for you if you are considering applying for the program this year or if you perhaps work in a tertiary clinic and would like to sponsor a clinician or a yoga teacher to do the program so that they can run a course for your patients in the future. I'm going to go today in this video into the nitty gritty of what you can expect in this year's program. Uh, if you've listened to the other videos, you'll have a sense of the history of Yoga for Pain, the history of Yoga for Pain Care Australia, and why we run the program in the format that we do. I'm now covering the topics of the 2020 training, what you can expect in terms of the content covered, the time and the support that you get by way of feedback and assignments and mentoring. The 2020 Yoga for Pain Practitioner training totals about 150 hours over six to eight months. And that 150 hours, it includes time for reflective assignments and your personal study and your preparation for projects. And the reason we include that personal time in the 150 hours is because pain is complex and working with people with pain is complex, not just in terms of their needs of being complex, but in terms of our own as a provider, how we interact with someone who has complex needs. And so we feel that the time to integrate the information to really make sense of it in your own self and to have time to apply it well is is really important for you to have the outcomes you want over a long period of time so that's why the training time includes this personal study and some structured reflection we 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 guide you in that it's not that you're left to to go off on your own we, we guide you in that process and you also that private work that you do does feed into your assignments and we give you extensive feedback on your assignments so they're not the kind of you know tasks where you do them to tick a box and say I've completed that activity it's really part of the learning process of reflecting on what you've learnt, making sense of it and articulating it in a way that you can then use in the future okay so the 150 hour yoga for pain practitioner training has four phases Two of those phases are about 50 hours each and two are 25 hours each. And the first section of 25 hours is a foundations phase where you practice the yoga for pain movement and yogic foundations for yourself. So you get to experience it before you come in as a, you know, a sort of a thinking yoga for pain practitioner. You know, I need to do this for someone else. First, you experience it in yourself. And the way you do this is by yourself at home. So each week for about four weeks, you'll be uh, sent links to the four, well, actually it's, it's five yoga for pain lessons to do at home. And then in between, we have a group call where we come to discuss what you've experienced in the week in your own practice. We do, as you'll see, offer a lot of the contact time is virtual and that's to make it accessible for people who live regionally or interstate. So you only have to come into Melbourne for the six day program, which I'll talk about in a moment. But it's also because again, with pain, we know that for people with pain, it's an ongoing journey. And as providers, it's also an ongoing journey with those people with pain that we're supporting. And so in terms of the learning, rather than just throw it all at you in one tight swoop, we want to give you that time to build up that regular practice, regular understanding. Okay, so there's this uh, first part of the foundations, which includes your own practice and some discussion as a group to experience the, the material within your own body. And that takes about six weeks. The next phase is the the methodology phase and that's we meet in person to do this and this is always fabulous we have six days together in Melbourne and the days usually run from about 10 till 5 with a good lunch break there's a mix of practice experiential theory 
and frameworks on each day. So it can be mentally challenging compared to other, particularly if you're used to yoga teacher training, this isn't a yoga teacher training, it is different. Uh, it can be mentally challenging. So we're not trying to make the days, you know, 12 hours. We don't want to exhaust you. We want you to have time in the evening to go and relax and digest what has happened. So in terms of the practical, you have a chance to try teaching some of the principles of yoga for pain and getting feedback from your peers. You'll experience more uh, yoga for pain lessons. And particularly, we start to look at the distinguish, we start to discern between pain specific, pain friendly, and an applied yoga for pain progression. And to help us do this, we're going to uh, we have a visit from Jane Leslie, who is an absolute gun when it comes to teaching yoga for people with arthritis. We also experience a pain-friendly, very physical yoga class because while yoga for pain normally starts gently, it can be physical, but how do you still make it pain appropriate? So in this six days together, we're going into a lot more of the nuance of the different ways that you may offer this work. And of course, I'm mentioning that we're doing yoga and this is always a confusing moment for the health professionals and the clinicians because of course, in Australia, to be recognized as a yoga teacher, Yoga Australia recommends you have 350 hours of training as, a, as an entry level teacher. So. If you're not a yoga teacher, you're obviously not going to go and teach yoga classes per se. But what you'll, you, what you'll learn through this is really transferable principles and techniques and understanding that you can take into work with your, uh, your clients one-on-one. -on -one. You can also use them in group classes. And this can either be in the sense of you uh, sharing the methods with them it can also be about how you are educating them about what yoga is and how to approach a yoga class in their community. For example, if you've recommended they do yoga, but you're worried that they're going to push themselves too hard or go to the wrong yoga class. And the third really, really important aspect is this way that a yogic education, which I'm going to talk more about at the end, how it applies to us as providers and practitioners. And so this is more than just sharing techniques of yoga. It's how we are in ourselves when we meet someone with complex needs or with, you know, any needs. Uh, then in terms of theory, we go into pain science. We'll have a look at arthritis physiology and we look at a heap of yoga for pain specific frameworks. So these include things like the four stages to moving, which is looking at when a person presents with pain, which of the progressions of movement are they either habitually in, like one is continuously moving in a way that makes their pain worse, and therefore how do we adapt with these against these four stages? So that's an example of one framework that we would cover in the six day course. The third section is, we're calling, the names might change, but we're calling the focus section. And these are where now having a baseline of what a yoga for pain approach is, how do we then start to take expertise and more specific information and integrate and build it into a practice? So these will be virtually delivered group lectures and then you have a little reflective assignment doing topics like uh, neuropathic pain, uh, some psychological approaches to reflective practice, and we're also looking at something on trauma and pain because obviously they are highly linked. And the fourth phase of the program is the project. And this is really, really exciting. And last time we ran the program, if you read the Yoga for Pain um, Southwest, program, if you've read that on the website, you'll have a sense of 
what was involved on that program the the and it, it was actually all women who were the yoga for pain practitioners in this case the amount of time that they put into their project was uh, incredible because they really wanted to invest in the topic they really wanted to know about who they were teaching and what was going on for them so you'll see in the if you look at the the course outline the pdf of that you'll see that there's we've said about nine hours a week for the six weeks of this and that includes the time that you might take to research your own project the time to scope it the time to design a, a, a lesson to teach the lesson and then to reflect on it so you'll run a four-week course and that can be with group. If you're a yoga teacher, I recommend a very small group, up to six maximum for your first time. Just keep it really, really small. If you get three, then that's also great. If you're a clinician, you can do a small group, but you could also do it with an individual client. If that's the way that you tend to work, I think that that's a really good way to, to uh, apply and, and integrate the information. So a four-week course that you'll design, and each week... So each week and then surrounding the course, so over six weeks, there's a mentor, a group mentoring call where we're going to come and discuss what challenges are you facing with your group. We'll introduce new, um, new templates to help you design and plan your course. You also get to see other people's lessons plans and get to comment on other people's lessons plans and understand why are they doing that. And... So I, I draw here on uh, my background. I've been a facilitator and working in social enterprise for quite some time. So I'm drawing on uh, my knowledge from that area to help you look at outcomes-based education. Because with chronic pain, like there are so many things that you could offer somebody to help. There are so many things. But which do we choose in the time that we have available? So that's a process that we go through. So that leads me now to to talk you through some of the principles of the training that you can expect as kind of an undercurrent themes throughout your journey. And the first is inquiry. So we do a lot of asking, what are we actually trying to do here? And how do we, how do we get there? Because if you've got one hour with a client, sometimes you've got half an hour with a client. How do you do the most important thing? And one of the things that we're looking at is we want to make sure people can continue long enough with the things that you do offer so that they see the benefits. Because if we as providers have got all of these great tools and these great methodologies but people don't turn up, we don't get a chance to help them. The next theme is yogic. So yes, we are using uh, yogic frameworks. And in this sense, we're looking at the whole rich experience of yoga. Yoga as a physical practice, a psychological practice, a spiritual practice. And I think there's one that I've missed. Have I said psychological? And also a social practice. Because in yoga, there are principles of how we are with ourselves and with others. So, you know, as you know, in Australia, we can approach yoga for many, many different angles. Uh, but it's kind of useful sometimes to know what's available because a lot of, uh, perhaps if you're a clinician, if you go to regular yoga classes, you might have a sense of yoga as being more than movement and even more than relaxation. But to go a little bit into some of the philosophy and what yogic med meditation is can just offer, mean you've got more to offer your clients, plus perhaps interesting for yourself. And the third theme is education. And this is really, really interesting. And I could talk for hours about this, but I promise you I won't. But in education, we're sort of looking at you know, the, how, the, the forming of a person, the becoming of a person. And I, I, I want to draw on a couple of people who've influenced me in this space. And one is my lecturer, Marie-André Bayon, when I studied the, my degree in yogic education at the University of Lille, France. And Marie-André introduced me to what physical education means in the French high school system. Now, this is 2000. 
So I, I don't know, well, the quote was from 2000. I don't know if that's still, still how they look at it. But if you think about phys ed in, when you went to school, and when I think about phys ed, I think about getting chosen last at Tunnel Ball. But I want to read to you what the French high school books of 2000 described as physical education. It's to form through the practice of physical sporting and artistic programs a cultivated, coherent, independent citizen. You know, isn't that isn't that great? You know, it's about this, it's it's a whole internal and external development. And so Maria Andre of Bayon, who I studied with, this discipline that she developed is yogic education. And we go into this in more detail about what it is, but just to sort of you know, perhaps whet your appetite. Really simple definition is about the self-education that we find through a yoga practice. And this is physical. It's also emotional. It's social. And it's psychological. Just wondering if I should leave you with a couple more quotes. So here's one more. Through physical, emotional and civic education and the development of self-awareness, the practitioner becomes autonomous in developing the being in all its dimensions. It's a really beautiful field of study and I'm really pleased to be able to share some of that with the Yoga for Pain practitioners and what that looks like for us as providers in this emerging and important field and what it means for the people that we are supporting. So I hope that that's given you an introduction into what you can expect over the program. Check out the syllabus and please get in touch if you have other questions. The, we really wanna make sure that the program is right for you. It's 150 hours, which I realise is not going to be for everybody. But if it is the program for you and it feels like a good fit for you, I think that you'll find it challenging, interesting and eye-opening and providing you not just with knowledge but with skills and a way of thinking that you can take well into the future. Thanks for listening.